Greetings 40k fans and welcome to our look at the new Wrath of Magnus book for the Warzone Fenris series. This first part was obviously Curse of the Wolfen and this is a continuation and finale of that story. So let's have a look what we got. You can see the beautiful art of the new Rubric Marines there on the cover. And always beautiful art from Games Workshop artists there. With the symbols of Zinch on the back. All right, you get the two books. The rules for the new Rubric Marines, and obviously the story of Magnus's attack on Fenris. Now I won't spoil the story for you, but I will show you some of the artwork in here. Which of the new models. And it goes into detail about lead up to the events of this book, like the burning of Prospero, and everything that happened in Curse of the Wolfen, lead up to the start of this story. So there's all pictures of models, there's some really stunning artwork there. And now, as I said, I won't spoil the story for you, so we'll move on to the rules. And you have more pictures of the new marines there, some of the new Scarab Occult Terminators and the new Aramon. We also get the new Exalted Sorcerer unit, which is just one as a character, but you can take them in a formation where you can have multiple of them, which makes them even better. And we've got Aramon here. Points cost is now 230, but you can upgrade him to, with another 30 points to have a disc of Zinch, as you see on the model there. Uh, he's got all of his standard rules, like the Black Staff of Araman from before, uh, and he is now able to generate powers from Biomancy, Demonology, Divination, Ectomancy, Geomeric, Heretic, Pyromancy, Sinistrum, Telekinesis, Telepathy, and Zinch Disciplines. And there's a whole new Zinch Discipline in this book. Then you've got the Exalted Sorcerers. Now these are the uh, ones that are supposed to be in control of the Silver Towers that are part of the attack on Fenris. And so as such they have a special rule. So those being powerful sorcerers and able of upgrading to Mastery Level 3 as well as taking discs if they want. They have the ability Lord of the Silver Tower. Once per battle instead of firing in the shooting phase an Exalted Sorcerer can call upon the deadly firepower of his Silver Tower in the form of Coruscating Beam which is a range unlimited, strength 9, AP 2, heavy 1, blast, lance, one use only. But still, that is fairly powerful and should be able to take out a small elite unit, so you hit that on a unit of terminators, and they'll probably not be there anymore. They all have four staves and Aura of the Dark Glory, and the Mark of Zinch, obviously, so lots of invulnerable staves there. Now we've got some of the other new units, the Zangors. The Beastmen originally is seen in the Silver Tower board game, only these ones are armed with uh, chain swords and auto pistols. But you can take them though just with close combat weapons, so you can use the ones from the Silver Tower and then upgrade them with uh, chain swords and auto pistols. They also have Relic Hunter special rule. Models with this special rule can re-roll all failed hit rolls in close combat against an enemy model equipped with a relic of their factions or their factions equivalent. A chaos artifact, so anything taken from the special lists for any army of rare artifacts actually makes these guys better if they're up against an opponent that has one. And obviously, they can have upgraded to have a champion and such, and you can have a unit of up to 30 of them. Then you've got the Rubric Marines. Now, I'll point out something here that uh, a lot of units in this new book actually only get benefits when they have 10 or more models, like with. Uh, standard Space Marines, like you can only have these new very nice looking cannons uh, if you have 10 or more Marines in the squad. But since the sacred number of Zinch is 9, that's a little bit against the fluff there, but in the formations later in the book, it actually rewards you for having 9 units in said formation. So it balances out. What they have now is start with 4 Rubric Marines and Inspiring Sorcerer, and you can take up to 15 more. So you can do multiples of nine if you want. 
and you can replace their Inferno bolt guns with warp flamers. Inferno bolt guns are pretty much the same as they always were, with being AP3 bolt guns, but a warp flamer is basically a flamer that also has the AP3, which is fantastic. Uh, here is for every 10 rolls in the unit, one Rubik Marine may replace their Inferno bolt gun with a saw reaper cannon, which is a heavy four rending strength five AP3. So really, really nice weapon, but the fact you can only take it if you go over the ancient sacred number is a bit against the fluff, as I said. And you can give this sorcerer all the usual things, melter bombs, it gives some mutation, and you can have one of these new icons of flame there. And now we'll move on to the next unit, the new Scarab Occult Terminators. Now these guys are slightly better than your usual Terminator squad, since they have a sorcerer as a squad lead to build in. You don't have to take squad terminators and then just have them as a bodyguard for a sorcerer. Sorcerers get access to all the usual biomancy, demonology, divination, ectomancy, geomortis, heretic, pyromancy, sinistrum, telekinesis, telepathy, and zinch disciplines. And they're mastery level twos, but they can be upgraded. You can have up to five additional terminators, and for every five models in the unit, one scarab occult terminator may replace his inferno combi bolter. Yes, that's right, I said inferno combi bolter. So now you've got twin linked bolters that are AP3, uh, and it can replace one of them with a heavy warp flamer which is basically a heavy flamer with AP3, or you can have a Soul Reaper Cannon, so once again the Heavy 4 rending strength 5 weapon. And you can also take, for every 5 models, one can have the Hellfire Missile Rack, which is what this guy has here, which is essentially a crack missile launcher with um, Rate of Fire 2. So you can fire two crack missiles per turn, strength 8, AP3, as well as your normal heavy weapon allowance. And the sorcerer can also carry a power sword and have any communication he wants, and they can have a land raider as a dedicated transport. Now we're on to the big man himself, Magnus the Red, Demon Primarch of Zinch. Cost 650 points. So fairly expensive, but you would expect him to be since he dwarfs other demon princes. He's weapon skill 7, ballistic skill 7, strength 8, toughness 7, wound 7, initiative 7, attack 6, leadership 9, save 4+. Plus. And he's a flying, monstrous creature. He has Edamantium Will, Demon of Zinch, Deep Strike, Eternal Warrior, Fearless Fleet, It Will Not Die, Psycho, Mastery Level 5, and Veterans of the Long War. So Mastery Level 5 already a huge thing. And the fact that he's Eternal Warrior means there is no way you can just instant kill him. However, uh, he also has another special rule called Omniscient Eye. Magnus has line of sight to every unit on the battlefield when determining the targets of his psychic powers. So if they're in range of the power, he will always be in line of sight. Doesn't matter if he's on the other side of a building, or there's a solid piece of terrain that you can't see through in any other way, he can still see them. He also has unearthly power. Magnus harnesses warp charges points on a result of 2 plus when attempting to manifest psychic powers. So not only does he get the highest mastery level seen so far? He gets to get his warp charges on a two plus. And he is a psyker, which knows the gaze of Magnus psychic power, which we'll get to in a minute, as well as all the powers from the Zinch and Change disciplines. He has the artifacts, the Blade of Magnus, which is a strength user AP2 type melee force soul blaze transmogrify. Which and I'll just skip ahead a little bit to tell you. Page 27. It is any to wound roll of six made by an attack that has the special rule against the instant death special rule. If any models are slain in this manner, you may immediately place a new chaos spawn model under your control as close as possible to where any of the slain models were standing, but more than one inch from any enemy models. So just by killing things with this weapon, you're getting yourself reinforcements potentially. He's also got the crown of the Crimson King. Magnus has read as a 4 plus invulnerable save and never suffers from perils of the war, further cementing him as the best psycho in the game. Now we have the formations. We have a walker ball. This is kind of your basic formation. We have the option for Aramon, a demon prince, and exalted sorcerer as a sorcerer as the leader. And then one to three units chosen from the following exalted sorcerer or sorcerer. 
one to three units of Rubric Marines, and one to three units of Scarabus Cult Terminators. And the special rule here is that if you take the full three for each of these options, so you have nine, the sacred number, you have the favoured of Zinch. If a war cabal contains the maximum number of units, then all units in the formation can reroll any failed saving throws of one. And if you think about that with the, ta the Terminators, that means you're getting a two plus save, which the only time you fail it, you can reroll. So it's pretty spectacular. You also have oracular guidance. If a psychic from a walker ball successfully manifests a psychic power, the psychic and any walker ball unit he is part of or has joined can reroll failed hit rolls of one until the start of your next psychic phase. Then you have the war coven, which is either a demon prince, exalted sorcerer, or sorcerer, and three to nine of exalted sorcerers or sorcerers, so just one massive formation of psychers. And, once again, they gain the favour of Zinch if they take the Nine, it's pretty much standard for all the formations in this book. But they also have Prosperine Cults. Before generating powers for models from a Warp Coven, you can choose a single cult of Ancient Prospero from those listed below. All units in the formation that count as having belong to that cult, and harness Warp Charge Points on a result of 3+, plus when attempting to manifest psychic powers from that cult's associated psychic discipline. So you have Pavoni for Biomancy, Corvidae for Divination, Pyra for Pyromancy, Raptora for telekinesis, and Athenaeans for telepathy. So it's really a good way of fitting into the fluff that these ancient cults of Prospero are now shown as these war covens that specialize in certain disciplines. Next you have a Zangor Warherd, which once again, they gain the favor of Zinch if you take the full units, which is zero to six units from either Zangor's or Chaos Spawn, three units of Zangor's basically, and one sorcerer or exalted sorcerer leading them. But they also gain average Vigor. Zangle units from this formation can run and charge in the same turn. In addition, if a charging Zangle unit rolls 9 or more for its charge roll, add 1 to their strength and initiative in the initiative and fight subphase. And now I move on to the Sekhmet Conclave, which is one of the following. Either Magnus the Red himself, Araman, a Demon Prince, Exalted Sorcerer or Sorcerer, and 3 to 9 units of Scarab Cult Terminators. Uh, they gain the Fear special rule, and a favoured of Zinch. If a Sekhmet Conclave contains the maximum number of units from this formation, it can reroll any failed saving throws of one. So as I said before, with Terminators, that makes them almost impossible to kill. And having nine squads of them would be an incredible force. But they also gain Sorcerer's Sigil Wars. Units from a Sekhmet Conclave have plus one toughness so long as they are within, they are within six inches of at least two other units from their formation. So not only are they nearly impossible to kill, they've also got plus one toughness just from being near each other. That makes them insanely difficult to kill. And I can see that being taken in games just to show you've got that many squads of Terminators, try and kill them. And you've got Araman's Exiles, which is Araman, and that's three to nine Exalted Sorcerers, once again, favoured as each. And it has Cabal of the Rubric. Araman and models from his disformation that are within 18 inches of him harness warp charge points and result of 3 plus when attempting to manifest psychic powers. So you get Araman, and you get all your other sorcerers get better as long as they stay near him. Then you have the Rahati War Sect, which is Mags the Red himself, and 3 to 9 units chosen from the following Demon Prince or Exalted Sorcerer. So this is basically the main psychic war unit. So you take Magnus and all his mastery, and then you take as many other sorcerers or demon princes with that kind of power as possible. And you have Court of the Crimson King. While they're within 18 inches of Banks the Red, demon princes and exalted sorcerers from a Waharati war sect harness warp charge points on a result of 3 plus when attempting to manifest psychic powers, and they have line of sight to every unit on the battlefield when determining the targets of their psychic powers. And also, once again, they have the favourite of Zinch. Some beautiful shots of the models there. Magnus. Now he is, interestingly enough, has three different head varieties here. You've got the one we're familiar with now, with the scarred eye, but you've also got the Slothopian variant, more reminiscent of the old epic model, with him having just a single eye in the center of his forehead. And you also have an Arvid mask forehead as well. Some of the beautiful new exalted sorcerer models. And the new Aaron. All the new Rubric Marines, and I love these new Zangors because they'll go perfectly with the ones from Silver Tower. And we're on to the armories of each. I've mentioned the weapons already. 
and the disciplines you can gain. And there is the one I mentioned earlier in Magnus' stance, Gaze of Magnus, Warp Charge 5, so incredibly high powered. But it is a range 18 strength destroyer AP1 Assault 1 Soul Blaze. So anything that gets hit by this, most likely not going to be there. And he can do it while he's assaulting a unit. So if it isn't destroyed by the beam, it's almost certainly going to get destroyed by him. Now I won't go strictly into the disciplines too much, since a lot of them are merely chaos versions of the space marine ones. First is I'll have a beautiful picture of the models there. Now, um, there's also several formations in here for demons, as well as all the chaos artifacts for the thousand suns, so you can get some incredible ones there, as well as all their new war traits. As I said, there is also loads of scenarios that let you play it out. The events of Magnus' Wrath. And now we come on to the Chaos Demons. Some rules were added for them in the Curse of the Wolf, and they've been included here, as well as a load of new things as well. Including the familiar Pink Horrors, but now when they die, anytime, even if the unit is completely wiped out altogether, you get a unit of Blue Horrors, just like in the old classic rules. And when you get a unit of blue horrors, if they get completely wiped out, or even if just one or two of them get wiped at a time, you now get a unit of these brimstone horrors. Every time any of these guys gets killed, you get to place two of the other kind. And it even says in the rules, called split, that if the entire unit would be wiped out before the last model is removed, you get all the other horrors, so they can't. There is no way to deny that from happening. You will always get the ability to have these. And the brimstone horrors are the same, and they all have the ability to generate powers from the change discipline. Then, of course, you have the new formations: the Law Steel Host, which is the Blue Scribe of the Zinch, and a whole load of blue horrors. The Brimstone Conflagration, which is a whole lot of Brimstone Horrors, and an Exalted Flame Rose each. And the Omniscient Oracles, Kairos Fate Weaver, and up to three Lords of Change. And finally, the Heralds Anarchic. You can have up to nine Heralds of Zinch in a single unit. Right, that's all we're going to look at for now. Hopefully we'll be able to soon bring you some games using these new rules, and I hope you'll enjoy the story. Like I said I won't spoil it here, but I can tell you it's an amazing read, and you won't be able to wait to see the ending of it. It's more than we were expecting. Alright, that's all for this time. Remember to like and subscribe.